Hey everybody, thought I'd do a little paver nerd session for you guys uh, today and see uh, see how you're all doing. Uh, hopefully everybody's doing good and we are plugging along and past all the rain. Uh, got a lot of rain this week and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting. I think it's slowed down more construction world than, than, than anything that's been going on, uh, which uh, I mean, that's, that's a positive rather than rain than than a massive epidemic that's just going to shut the economy down. So anyways, I just wanted to touch base with you guys on a topic that keeps coming up in my world that most people don't like to discuss at meetings or job site kickoffs and uh, design reviews, and that's maintenance. Uh, maintenance is a big deal. Uh, paver maintenance, concrete maintenance, everything has maintenance. Uh, your car has maintenance. So if you don't maintain it, you have issues. Um, Bottom line is so many people put pavers down and the first comment I get back is, hey, there's stains on them. Hey, there's, there's, you know, we're having troubles maintaining them. Uh, why do we have to maintain them? Uh, bottom line is people pour gray concrete and they don't really care because it's cheap and it's just blah, there's nothing to it. So they don't even put a thought into the fact that there might be stains or, or uh, build up on it or tire marks or things like that because it's just gray concrete nobody cares uh, same thing with asphalt it's just it just is what it is so anyways uh, that being said pavers when you pay an additional amount for a product um, let's say you get concrete poured for seven eight bucks a foot and you put down pavers that are 10 to 13 bucks a square foot all of a sudden ownership uh, tends to look at the product and feel that they are hosed a little bit because they now have to maintain it or it should maintain itself because they paid a premium for it. Um, 10 to 13 bucks is not a premium first off. Uh, it's pretty average for concrete. Um, getting into exposed aggregates and shot blasting, which we do over here at Orco too, um, you know, that obviously raised the cost a little bit, but it's still just concrete. Concrete pavers, uh, same thing as concrete. So you pour gray concrete, you have a gray concrete paver. There is no mixed design difference other than that we are pre-curing them or slow curing them or uh, designing a zero slump product uh, early on uh, before the contractors get their hands on it. So it's all cured and ready to rock when they uh, start laying paper. So we take the cure time out. Uh, picking a standard off the shelf paper uh, definitely does a lot of that. So, I mean, you could place place an order today, pick up, you know, have it shipped tomorrow, and you're off to the races. So you have uh, pre-cured concrete. You don't have to worry, worry about it curing for the next few days. It's already done. Install it and go. Um, back to the subject, though, maintenance is, you know, I think the big part that people just don't understand is that, yeah, you paid a little bit more for the product, but it's no different than the average everyday concrete. Uh, technically, you have to maintain your own concrete, too. Um, you spill wine, you spill grease, you spill oil. Um, it's outside of a jack-in-a-box, it's outside of a Carl's Jr., it's outside of a Mexican restaurant, you know, whatever it is. Um, there is grease, stains, you know, all that stuff's going to happen. And just because you paid a little bit more for it doesn't mean that it is going to um, withstand all those or or not. you're not going to have to deal with staining and, and issues later on, tire marks, the whole night. Uh, you want to not deal with it as much, you know, pick burnished finishes, pick darker colors, um, Lighter color is just going to show it more. Uh, you pour white concrete, staining is going to happen tomorrow. Uh, you use white pavers, you're going to have the same issue. Um, but how to maintain it is probably the better question. So the fact that there is maintenance, yes, there is maintenance. Uh, it's inevitable. <laughs> you have to do maintenance. Uh, there's all kinds of parts to maintenance. Um, there's you know maintaining the sand joints. There's um, cleaning. There's you know dealing with stains. There's uh, you know, you get a little divot or a little pothole in, in, in a paver section or an asphalt, uh, you patch the asphalt, you pull up a couple of pavers and put some sand down, put the pavers back down, recompact it, uh, you have done maintenance and that's all typical maintenance. You know, it's hopefully it doesn't happen, but you know, it does. So you have to, you have to learn how to maintain it or just be, um, uh, conscious of the fact that, that there is maintenance that's going to happen. So uh, the, I've been on many job sites. Uh, I've walked job sites where they've had issues later, and they don't know what to do with it. And you know, how do we how do we handle it? What are we, what are we going to do about it? Well, right now the big thing is people are, are obviously pressure washing. They're cleaning. Uh, we work a lot with the Irvine Company, and Irvine Company has a pretty strict regiment of 
how they maintain, but um, and and they keep their their projects very nice. Um, but they are on a maintenance regimen, so you know once again you just you have to do maintenance if you think that you're going to put down any kind of concrete product, any kind of clay product, any kind of um, you know flat work product. Period. It's going to have maintenance. Um, so, anyways, how to it? How to do it? Uh, there, it, you just get caught up, or most uh, most people just think that hot water is the answer. Um, hot water pressure washing is probably ideal, um, but uh, most of the times with colored concrete, or, you know, exposed aggregate concretes, you, you have done sealer. So people put sealer down as a maintenance um, maintenance issue, and they think that, okay, we sealed it, we're not going to have any problems. Uh, that's still not true. Uh, most sealers are breathable, and they can have a little bit of staining in. Grease, oil, wine, all that stuff, it's going to penetrate if you don't clean it off. Um, if you leave it there long enough, you're going to own it. So that's kind of the, that's the issue there is most people think that we put a sealer down and a sealer is going to do all the work for us. It's still not. So once again, we go back to maintenance and how to maintain it. So hot water pressure washing is probably one of the more ideal uh, ways to maintain a, uh, a flat work or a hard hardscape uh, area. But uh, hot water pressure washing strips sealer. Once again, been on job sites where six months three months even that you know there's basically no sealer one they put down way too thin of a coat so when you talk to your contractor get the receipt on on how much sealer they used um, it averages pretty much about a gallon per hundred square feet um, even a gallon per 90 square feet is probably ideal um, but that's pretty average so if you got a guy you did 10,000 square feet and he ordered 10 gallons of sealer um, you got different issues. Uh, there's basically no sealer down or it's just a real light skin coat that isn't going to do anything at all. Um, so hot water pressure and washing is just going to strip it right off real quick. But the right coat, um, the right thickness of, of sealer going down does help and it does prolong the, uh, uh, the maintenance on it. So you're able to extend uh, how often you can uh, hot water pressure wash uh, without it completely stripping the sealer off. So that's probably one of the bigger uh, problems that I get you know, out there is most people not understanding they need to put a budget in for maintenance. They need to put um, um, a maintenance crew or maintenance staff or maintenance regiment in place, um, how to deal with it. Uh, all these things really come into play. So you've got to really pay attention to what, what, uh, what's going on or, or what your site, how your site's working. Uh, anyways, the, the basic or the end all of it is that, you know, Cleaning is necessary and pressure washing can be done. Um, cold water is a little bit better because uh, it doesn't strip the sealers quite as much. Um, my past experience, um, get off your butt, go to the hardware store, Home Depot carries it, um, get some Zep, which is a degreaser. Uh, they do it in the cleaning aisle. Uh, that stuff works really well. Um, I've been on some job sites for motor oil from old leaky vehicles were in the vehicular sections and they basically put down um, a, a layer of Zep uh, straight on it, let it sit for 10-15 minutes, and then came in and pressure, hot water pressure washed, and it did amazing. Uh, I was actually pretty shocked. So anyways, uh, that's one other uh, little helpful hint you can put in your back pocket. Zep from Home Depot uh, will help with degreasing, uh, you know, oils or, you know, even food areas. So that's a little tip, uh, tip from Paper Nerd that you can uh, take home, run to the bank with. It does work. And then um, how to maintain, though, after that is... It's kind of up to you. You kind of have to build your own um, uh, regimen. So if you have really high traffic, you might be pressure washing, you know, every you know three or four nights. Um, if you have real low, it might be once a week, you know, once every two weeks, even once a month. Uh, it just it just depends on the type of traffic that you have and how to keep up with it. Um, and then on top of that, once you use a lot of hot water, um, obviously you got to keep in mind that you've been stripping the sealer, so now you have to reapply. I've been on job sites where it's you know they're they're reapplying sealer every six to twelve months. Um, usually, typical seal sealers will last two to three years, uh, but that's usually on a residential project uh, where they see real low volume use. Um, person's probably never pressure washing at all. Um, you know, even on residential though, you should be cleaning it. Um, I've done my driveway probably you know three or four times in you know five years because it just looks good when it's done. Uh, so you do want to stay on top of that. Uh, cleaning is needed. Um, put a budget together on commercial projects for this. Uh, know about it, understand it, and uh, make sure that you use a good sealer. Um, 
I've had a lot of good history with uh, BP Pro products um, that are right in Santa Ana, California, uh, but I know they ship out of, I think they have an East Coast office too, uh, but they ship out of uh, Santa Ana. So uh, we at Orco carry BP Pro. Um, you're more than welcome to give us a shout and we can uh, set you up with that. But there are different types too. Um, that's another thing you could talk about too is uh, natural looks, satin looks, um, or, uh, enhanced uh, hat, satin and enhanced is probably one and the same. Then there's wet looks. Um, then there's also lacquer based, uh, which is solvent based, which is really, really wet look. I'm not a big fan of that because uh, there is, if you don't do it right, uh, you, you can have some issues um, if it delaminates because it's more of a topical type product. Um, but you want to use penetrating water based sealers. Those work really well. Uh, my favorite is always an enhanced, um, so that way it kind of masks any problems that are down. Uh, so you do spill some wine, you use a natural look sealer, you really see it, uh, especially when dirt starts hitting it and starts building up and the grime starts building up and it starts to turn black from, you know, mother nature, dirt, people's shoes, tire marks, anything. Um, it does tend to darken. So with natural, you see it a lot more. Um, it's a lot more pronounced. Uh, with satin, uh, you kind of enhance the color a little bit, make it pop a little bit more. Um, it does help with the color of the pavers too, so it's, it's pretty nice. It is not a wet look, so do not confuse it for a wet look. It is an enhanced, um, but it does tend to mask some issues a little bit when they're down and it tend, in, in, in eating areas or um, places where you have food. Um, enhanced tends to be the best. Uh, that's probably uh, hands down the one I'd recommend on pretty much every commercial project. There's also permeable sealers too um, that seal the paper along with uh, stabilizing the aggregates in the joints. So. Uh, once again, there's maintenance to that too. It doesn't last forever. So make sure you may, uh, maintain that one too. But bottom line is put a maintenance package to, together. Um, make sure you do use sealer on your commercial projects, uh, even on your residential projects. Um, and then uh, make sure you get the cleaning right. Um, make sure you're on a good regiment that works and uh, something that um, you can keep up with. And there's, uh, there's, there's so many different types of sealers out there, but just make sure that you're using a... Um, for me, like I said, water-based is probably the best. Um, you'll see it usually they're white, milky uh, colored sealers. So um, clear ones tend to be solvent-based, which um, I have used those. Uh, some of them do look good and they have their place, but uh, there's there, you, you gotta know what you're doing when you're playing with those. It's not just uh, uh, you know spray it down and, and go to town. So make sure you pay attention when you're using solvent-based ones, uh, which are usually the more wet look uh, type stuff. Anyways, the uh, getting back to the maintenance side of things is, you know, hot water, uh, it's key, it helps, uh, but you don't want to use it all the time. And if you do use it all the time, know you are stripping the sealer. Uh, you are breaking it down. It's basically what it is. It's heating it up and they are acrylic, so they're basically melting off more and more every time you do it. Uh, the other part is uh, cold water, cold water pressure washing, um, push broom, soap and water, um, ZEP. Uh, like I said, ZEP, uh, not that I'm... Uh, Peddling Zep stuff, but it just worked good. Um, I've seen it used many times, and it just really breaks down the greases, and it, it helps. So you can, uh, uh, and it's just a detergent, so um, it does help. Uh, that stuff you can use, and it will help on some problem areas. Uh, so something really close to food, uh, oils, grease, um, tire marks, oil, uh, leaky old car, uh, that type of thing will uh, it will help. So with Zep, though, you are wanting to use uh, hot water. It's keep in mind when you're doing that, you're looking for a deep clean. Uh, which would be, you know, hot water, um, Zep. Uh, let it sit for a little while uh, raw before before you wet everything down, and that way it tends to break things down a little bit more, really get in um, inside the, the porousness of the paver or the concrete, and that will help. And then and then use the hot water after a few minutes, and it will break stuff up. You know, maybe do it two or three times if it's a problem area, but it'll definitely get better than what it was. That's for sure. Um, so, guys, just pay attention when you're out specking stuff. Uh, don't, uh, don't think that pavers because they cost a little bit more that they are a answer to no maintenance. Um, like I said, everything has maintenance. Uh, so just be aware of that. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up on, on, on maintenance. And it's just another topic that needs to be addressed in the paver industry and uh, doesn't get addressed enough. And most people don't realize it and don't put the maintenance package together. Don't put the budgets together to actually do something along these lines. So it's helpful. Um, anyways, maintenance, uh, that's my little uh, chat about maintenance and uh, pavers. And uh, to go into a little bit different side, uh, when you are uh, cleaning and pressure washing, make sure you wash, watch the sand joints. 
those, you know, you don't want to blast all the sand out of the joints. Um, that is a, uh, a problem long term. So you want to make sure that those are always filled and that you're using the wand or the pressure washer at an angle that it uh, it actually works to where it's uh, um, cleaning the pavers, not just blowing out the sand joints. Um, don't be the little kid in there who just wants to see all the sand go flying out of the sand joint. So make sure that it's uh, you're, you're doing the right thing and, and, and you're actually maintaining the pavers, not causing more harm than anything. Um, the other part is using a pressure washer. Uh, the type of spray nozzle you use can be uh, bad. Um, something really small, real fine point, um, you're going to be spelling your name and etching it into the tops of the concrete or pavers. So be careful with that. Hold it a few inches away. Do not try to blast the cream or the uh, face off the paver uh, trying to get it all clean. You will uh, basically uh, alter the paver or etch it in a way and uh, that will show up when it's all said and done and dry. So be careful when you're doing that. Uh, just another helpful hint. Um, but you got to be careful. It's, it's, it's something that will actually ruin um, the, the pavers and, and there's no going back from that. So. Um, the other thing too is efflorescence. Um, efflorescence happens, it's a natural occurrence. Uh, there are um, efflorescence removers out there. You gotta once again be careful how you use them. Uh, they will burn, most of them are acid based, so they, um, they do etch the pavers, so you gotta be careful. Uh, for me, uh, I, I use it often, um, just cleaning old pavers or, or doing things, getting ready for submittals and mock-ups. And sometimes you're digging through a boneyard trying to find something that uh, doesn't even exist anymore and you haven't made it in 10 years, but you found something and you make it work. And, uh, they can tend to be dirty, white, uh, things like that. So you can use some Eflo off or efflorescence remover. And uh, what I tend to do is wet things down first and um, apply it on and clean it. And if I still need to do it more, I just keep doing it uh, uh, different different time frames. So wait a couple seconds, clean it. Uh, wait a couple seconds, clean it. Um, most of the time it does it in one shot, but uh, it just depends on uh, you know how, how comfortable you are using it. So you don't want to burn anything once again. That can be bad. Uh, you'll be etching the papers again, and once the once you do that, there's no turning back from that either. So, um, anyways, that's kind of maintenance in a nutshell. The last part is just uh, you know if you get some papers that you know they divot a little bit or you know have a little swell to them, or uh, you could tell that there's a little pocket forming, um, pull them up now. Uh, pull them up now. Add some sand and put them back down. Recompact them. Put some sand in the joints. Compact it again and move on. That is maintenance. When they all start failing, moving, creeping, walking all over the place, and almost just packing their bags and leaving, uh, that's just a whole lot bigger of a case. You know, your contractor is probably gonna have to get involved with that one. Um, generally, it's it's an underlying issue at that point. But uh, when they're small, you can fix it. And before they get big, a lot of them start small. So can be shame on you for not paying attention or shame on you for just uh, not not you know catching it while it's early on you know it's it's it, it's like anything else you know you start feeling bad you go to the doctor you don't wait till you're on your deathbed before you go to the doctor so um, kind of the same thing just make sure that you stay on top of every aspect of maintenance um, pavers are not you know maintenance um, free uh, nothing is Anybody, anybody tells you any different, they're lying. So, got to make sure you just uh, you stay on top of the maintenance um, sealer. It does help. Um, once again, BP Pro products they uh, they make a great sealer. Um, Troy and uh, Steven have always uh, been super helpful over there. If you need a guy to talk to, um, they're always Johnny on the spot. But uh, that's probably uh, our our sealer of recommendation. Um, there are a few one, a few other ones out there too. Um, just use your discretion. Uh, homework and uh, go through all that stuff but uh, water-based sealers to me are ideal um, and then maintenance as far as uh, cleaning and sealing uh, you know coming back you know every couple of months you know maintaining it you know if it's a real heavy traffic retail area you might be doing it every few nights but you know just make sure you're not blasting out the sand joints make sure you're using the right type of pressure washer make sure that you're not using hot water every single time every night uh, you will have no sealer after two three months it'll be gone um, it just it won't it won't hold up. So hot water, it, it's just gonna it's just gonna erode it away, uh, eat it away because it's just it's gonna bring the temperatures up and melt the melt the plastics in there for the polymers. Um, so 
basically that's kind of it in a nutshell. And if you have any other issues that start popping up, you know, little divots, things that you need to pull up, pick up, do it now before it's too late, uh, before it becomes a bigger problem and a more, much more expensive. That's the cool thing about part about pavers is that you can maintain them and you can uh, fix them fairly easy when it's early on and it's not a big issue. Uh, the other part is there is no cracking. So, you know, you never have to deal with the cracks uh, like you do concrete. Concrete's guaranteed to crack, basically. And uh, so if you can if you can do that, you pick them up, you know, fix whatever you need to fix, put them back down. The nice thing is those same pavers match the existing pavers because they are the existing pavers. So it's the cool thing about sand setting pavers is, is you are able to fix things like that. So anyways, guys, uh, thanks for hearing me out. And if you guys got any other questions or you want any other topics uh, brought up, uh, in one of my uh, uh, videos, I can uh, um, just shoot shoot me an email, shoot me uh, you know some kind of text that lets me know what what's on your mind and you know what we should talk about next. But uh, just wanted to kind of go over this with you guys so you guys do know and uh, doesn't get forgotten. Maintenance is one thing that always seems to be forgotten, and there's you know rarely a budget for it. So prep for it, prep for it early, and uh, we'll see you later. Take care, and uh, once again. Shoot me any comments or uh, put, put something in there that uh, you guys want me to talk about next, and I'll be happy to. Take care. Have a good week.